Awesome. Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, exciting day, signing day. Uh, we are so excited. We uh, signed 15 guys. We have 15 guys committed, signed all 15. And, um, of course, it always starts up front, and we feel like we've got uh, four uh, big-time guys up front on defense, three defensive tackles with really good size, explosive, uh, and, then a, and then an excellent pass rusher and Maurice Himes. Behind him, uh, a linebacker, one of the best linebackers, uh, especially on the West Coast, but in the state of Washington, and Will Latu, um, who's a phenomenal athlete. I mean, played running back, played linebacker. Uh, he's got really good size, you know, 5'11", 230, 235. I think he's going to be a uh, he's going to be a monster in the middle for us. And then uh, the three defensive backs that we signed all have really good length, really good traits that we look for. Um, and our DBs, very smart football players that also have uh, really good ball skills. And then again, starts up front on offense, you know, signing those two offensive linemen. You know, Coach Huff has done a phenomenal job of, of pinpointing guys, um, you know, that play our brand of football here uh, that are tough, nasty, but also have really good length. And it, it starts with, uh, with Owen Prentice, uh, one of the best offensive linemen in the country. And then, of course, we now we'll have an offensive tackle body with, uh, with RJ next to him. So, Extremely excited about those two guys. And then Sam Heward, best quarterback in the country. Uh, guy that's uh, ultra accurate, but has unbelievable leadership traits. Uh, you know, I personally have known Sam for a long time now. This guy breathes football, and um, he's everything that we want in our quarterbacks. Accurate leadership qualities, uh, smart. Um, we're so excited that, uh, that he's a dog. And then we, we know we like those big uh, bruising running backs. Uh, we got a running back out of Texas, Caleb Berry, that we're very excited about, uh, that also plays our style of football. And then our two tight ends. We play, play with a bunch of tight ends. We'll continue to play with tight ends. And uh, we're extremely excited about uh, two guys from the state of Washington uh, that will be right here uh, playing for the dogs. And then rounding out with everybody from, from another uh, person from the state of Washington, and Jabez, uh, wide receiver, electrifying can play inside, can play outside, and plays with a defensive mentality. He's tough. He's tough to bring down and has excellent hands. So we're extremely excited. Got, uh, they believe it's eight, eight on defense, seven on offense. Uh, those were the guys that we targeted and we signed, and uh, we cannot wait uh, for them to step foot on campus. All right, we'll go to questions. We'll start with Kim Grinnell. to be followed by Ruth, then Lars, then Mike Farrell, uh, then others. Go ahead, uh, Kim. Hey coach, congratulations on signing class. And um, also I, I think the last guy to come out of Renton High School was me and I didn't play football. Um, I've never seen recruiting analysts scramble so hard, so fast to find out about a guy and who he was. There's gotta be a story behind COC uh, for now. Yeah, what a tremendous story. Um, this, this was uh, all of our research we do with all of our coaches, especially coaches in the state of Washington and our footprint. You know, our staff does a phenomenal job of, uh, you know, building those relationships and growing those relationships. Um, and it, it was really was as simple as a phone call and then a lot of research uh, by our staff to, to watch the film and, and comb through the film. And we saw a player uh, that we believe is going to be a big time player uh, for us and in the Pac-12 and, 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 and for, uh, you know, against anybody in the, in the country. He's got traits, uh, the, the size and measurables that you'll want. Uh, wait till you guys see this uh, young man in person. Um, and then when you turn on the tape, you see a guy that has twitch, that plays tough, he plays physical. Um, and again, you guys, you guys know me by now. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're negative three stars or negative 10 stars. When we turn on the tape and we, grade, and we do our own grading, and this guy was at the top of the charts of our grades, and um, he's going to be a big-time football player for UW. All right, we'll go to Ruth and then Lars. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, Jimmy, I mean, you, you committed 15 guys. You kept them all till the end. But I was wondering, you know, even though it was a small class, did you face any challenges at all with the COVID restrictions coming down the stretch with uh, any of the maintenance with these guys? I think we all did. Uh, so that's never – we're never going to use that as an excuse. I mean, everybody in the country has had to deal with that. We would have loved to – um, gone through the same recruiting process that we've had to, you know, that we've been fortunate to do for years now and have the official visits and spend more time with getting to know the parents and, and even getting to know the, uh, the prospects. 
Um, I know everybody missed out on that. I, I, I do feel sorry for, um, you know, all the players around the country that weren't able to, to go through a regular recruiting process. Um, but the 15 that we targeted, we signed all 15 and uh, any obstacles that we had to overcome, uh, we, we did overcome and, and they ended up signing with the dogs. All right, we'll go to Lars and then Mike Farrell. Go ahead, Lars. Yeah, Coach, um, speaking of one of those guys in particular, Caleb Berry didn't have a chance to visit up until this past weekend. Just talk about what made you guys impressed with him and then obviously the process and then seeing him on campus this weekend. Yeah, so for him not being able to see it, you know, way back when we, uh, you know, our creative team and uh, Justin Glenn, our, our director of recruiting, uh, we put these uh, virtual visits together uh, that we felt were, were, were the best in the country. And it showed them everything. It showed them our whole building. It showed them campus. It showed them Seattle life, what it would be like to run out of the tunnel. I mean, we went through it all, and it was all virtually, uh, just like right now. Uh, <laughs> as I'm seeing you guys, everything's virtual right here. You guys are still getting the information, um, and we were able to pump out that information uh, to, to the recruits. Um, thankfully, C Caleb saw what he needed to see and, and committed. Um, and then him and his mom, uh, they did get a chance to fly up here and, and see Seattle and um, and see the campus and on their own, of course. And they loved every minute of it. And they, they knew it was a fit. And it was just a verified once they were able to come up here and, and see it for themselves. All right, we'll go to Mike Varell and then Dan Raley. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Jimmy, I, you know, you obviously sign a lot of guys and, and some big time guys from the state of Washington. And I know there were some other guys from the state that went elsewhere. D do you feel like you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish in the state of Washington in this cycle? Yeah, I mean, we're we're extremely excited about our class. Uh, every single year, there's players from other states or even our own state that, that decide to, to sign somewhere else. Uh, that's recruiting. That's how that's how this thing goes. Um, and, you know, the only people we can worry about are the, are the players that end up signing here at the University of Washington. Um, and all we're going to do is continue to develop these guys. We're going to continue to pump out more NFL draft picks than anybody else in the Pac-12 conference. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to try to win North Division championships and Pac-12 championships and go to bowl games and, and win those bowl games. And we're excited about the people that want to be a part of this program. Um, and... So we're, we're, we're always trying to grow and improve. Uh, like I always tell you guys, that's one of our anchors of our program. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll do that after this, after this signing class. And after next year's signing class, there's always things that we can do better. But we're extremely excited about this class. And, uh, and the future will tell what this class will do here in the next few years here. All right, Dan Raley, then Chris Fetters. Go ahead, Dan. Jimmy, you've got 15. Will it, could this grow before it's done, before uh, the, the winter's out? Yeah, there's a possibility. There's definitely a possibility uh, that it could grow. That's really what this, with having two signing periods now, does for you. Um, you know, we'll have some attrition. We always do. Every school does. And this definitely could grow. And then again, you know, I, I, I've, I this question I think was asked last year or last week, um, the size of the class, it, it depends on how many scholarships you have available. Um, you know, one year it's going to be 20, one year it's going to be 15. It's dependent. You can only be at, up to the threshold of 85. Um, and so, uh, you know, for people to say we signed a small class or to sign a large class, everyone's signing a class to meet their 85 threshold. That's it. All right, we'll go to uh, Chris Fetters and then Anthony Edwards. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Jimmy, with that in mind, and so many guys entering the portal, I, I was wondering how much does that really dictate your thinking in terms of your overall number? And, and maybe you're thinking that, you know, guys are constantly trying to move around. Do you want to legislate for having one or two extra rides just in case if, if ideal situations pop up? Is that something that you have to think about nowadays compared to maybe a few years ago? Well, as soon as people move on, then obviously that number opens up. And so you're able to fill that number. Uh, so we're not waiting for people to leave uh, by no means. I think the, the, usually the, the one that usually happens to us more often than not is our, is our really good players move on to the NFL uh, they're, that are third year players, which we have a plan for uh, and that we do have ready just in case that does happen. So we do have guys, um, you know, on the, on the burner, so to speak of, uh, you know, if we lose 
uh, like for instance, last year, a Jacob Eason, a Savon, a Hunter that are leaving early, uh, let's make sure we have uh, guys in place that we know we want to offer scholarships to that we can move on very quickly. And that again will happen this year and that'll happen for, for years to come. But that's a really good problem to have. That means we selected the right people to have that opportunity to go to the National Football League before their senior year is complete. All right, Anthony Edwards and then Alec, Alec Dietz. Go ahead, Anthony. Hey, Coach, I know you like to uh, like visit the families of the players and things like that. And, you know, there's a lot of hurdles this year, but I mean, how do you replicate that? And then secondly, um, going into future classes without a season this year, especially in the state of Washington, how challenging will recruiting be in the coming years? Yeah, so the uh, it, it was all it's all Zoom, just like we do with our own families right now. You know, celebrate birthdays or Christmas or you know or uh, any uh, any occasion. It's going to be through Zoom. Thanksgiving is what I meant to say is through Zoom, um, and so that was how we had to connect with these families um, during this recruiting cycle. That it is what it is. There's a pandemic going on, and and the University of Washington is not the only one that's dealing with this. That's, that's everybody. But that was how we had to build those relationship was on the phone and through Zoom and through FaceTime. And then um, I do feel really sorry for first, the 2021 prospects that weren't able to show how much they've grown from their junior year to their senior year. And I do feel for those guys. Um, I will say this to those guys. There's opportunities at, at other places, to obviously, to go sign scholarships or to go walk on and um, we've had a, a lot of success stories of guys that have walked onto our program and have earned scholarships. And so keep your dream alive and keep working and, and people will find you. Uh, but I do feel for those guys. And then for the 2022 class and beyond, this, this is definitely going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for all of us to not have film um, to, to, to go back on and to watch and to evaluate for the guys that have already have offers because they've done enough. Uh, you know, those guys are sitting in a good position. But again, there's guys that grew five inches, gained 20 pounds, um, and are just coming into their own right now. And maybe this is going to be their year where they were going to launch onto the, to the recruiting scene. And so this will be a challenging year for the 2022s and beyond. Um, but we'll find ways to find them. I know other coaches will find ways to find them too. Uh, just, those guys just keep working hard and, and, and we'll find you. All right, Alec Dietz, then Lars, go ahead, Alec. Hey, Jimmy, you brought up um, Will Latu as a guy you're impressed with, obviously. Um, what, what I noticed on tape was he played all over the place on defense. I think he played a game at safety, outside linebacker. It sounds like you guys are going to have him at inside linebacker. How is his versatility going to help you there on defense? Yeah, I think the one thing you always want to look for an inside linebacker is an inside linebacker that plays that played running back. Um, you know, he knows what the running back's moves are going to try to be, uh, will try to do as they bounce in behind double teams and try to hit the open gap. Um, and in Will, he has the perfect measurables for a, a person that we're looking for at that inside linebacker position. Just about six foot, you know, over 230 pounds, but he's athletic and agile, just like a running back. So he's going to be able to match those running back moves uh, when those guys try to hit it up inside or try to bounce it, and he'll be able to go sideline to sideline. He's a physical football player. He's just going to continue to get stronger. Um, and so we're, we're, we're really excited about him. I, I still remember a, a play that I got to watch him here in our seven, seven on seven tournament here a couple of years ago. And he's running a wheel right out of the backfield, uh, playing wide receiver and DBs couldn't cover him. That's how athletic this guy uh, is at 235, almost 240 pounds. Um, so we're, Extremely excited about him, uh, excited about the growth he has, uh, that he has had at, academically. Started off a little uh, slow and then really picked it up throughout the rest of his high school career. And I know he's proud of that fact, and, and we're proud of him too. All right, we'll go to Lars and then Kim. Go ahead, Lars. Yeah, Coach. So with the exception of Sam, Zakari Spears was the first commit you got. Did it just happen to be that you got a, a cornerback as your first commit? And just talk about what you see in his game that – made you guys feel so early on that you could take him? Yeah, I still remember the first day. So we watched a bunch of film on him, and we were impressed with his film. But we, we always like to go see guys in person. I still remember the practice I was at and went and watched him uh, uh, perform. And he was all of the height uh, that 
you know, the coaches told us he was, he's really long. And then he just had an, a phenomenal practice, just working hard, um, defending all the footballs that were coming his way. And you could just tell he was a hard worker. He had the length. The film showed that he had the toughness, loved to, to, to throw his pads in there and tackle people. You guys know I love tough football players at every single position. And then it, when it matches up with uh, uh, the, the measurables, his size, his length, his ball skills, and then you start to get to know him. And once we got to know him, then we knew it was over. Uh, this is, this is, he's, a, he's got a great family. He's a phenomenal young man, and he's going to fit right in. Um, so happy he's a dog. All right, Kim and then Ruth. Go ahead, Kim. Um, hey, Jimmy. Uh, Caden Jumper looks like a real versatile guy. Um, how do you plan on using him? And also with John Donovan's offense compared to what you guys have had in the past and talking about measurables and traits, is there anything specific, anything unique or anything that uh, John is specifically looking for in this recruiting class? I got to have a guy that can do this. Yeah, so excited about Caden. Talk, talk about tough physical fo football players is a great transition. Uh, this guy is one of the, the, the tougher guys I've seen on film. Um, what you guys should think about is Will Disley. That's Caden Jumper, and Caden Jumper needs to come here and work hard. But that's exactly what he's going to be. He's going to be a he's going to be a great tight end for us. He's going to mash people in the run game. Um, then he's going to release and he's going to make some big time catches in the pass game. Uh, this is a, this is a dual uh, excuse me a, a player that played both sides of the ball um, for his high school. Played on offense, played on defense, and you can just see his versatility. We are so excited about him. He's a leader for his team. Um, and he's a very a much a Will Disley uh, duplicate. And then uh, your question about, you know, the traits we're looking for, I think throughout our whole program right now, we've got that fairly detailed out. Uh, we, we did a lot of that work uh, beginning in 2019 of December of last year. And so, uh, you know, we're looking for big, tough, physical football players. Uh, we like big people uh, that we, you guys have heard us say that already. And then in the past game, we, we want, we want guys that can catch it guys that can blow the top off of defenses. Then we want running backs that are willing to run between the tackles, but also have enough speed to run outside the tackles quarterbacks that are smart and um, that are accurate and a huge offensive line. Um, and then, and then tight ends to go along with that. Um, we, we're going to be in, you know, two tight end sets, one tight end sets, three tight end sets, four tight end sets, three receiver sets, four receiver sets. Um, and so it's going to be very, very multiple, which you guys have seen, and uh, you guys have only seen the, the beginning of it. All right, we'll go to uh, Ruth and then Mike Varel. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, Jimmy, if, you know, if you watch Twitter the last week or so, you know, you see a lot of guys going on there and thanking, you know, for the opportunity to become a preferred walk-on. Um, and I get this question a lot from fans and readers who just want to know what the difference is between a walk-on and a preferred walk-on and what goes into the decision whether or not to offer somebody a preferred walk-on. I wondered if you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, we really uh, uh, want to have as many walk-ons as possible that we feel are fits academically, but also athletically guys that we think could eventually grow, uh, you know, develop into scholarship players here for the University of Washington. And the really cool thing is, is, is history uh, shows that, that we will reward those guys. We have starters on our team right now that were uh, former walk-ons. And so to, to extend a, a walk-on uh, opportunity to somebody means that uh, they know that as long as they can get into school at the University of Washington, that we will allow them to come on to our team and be a and, and be and be a walk on and be a part of our football team. The opposite of that would be a student that is here already that is in that is that is a current student at the University of Washington has nothing to do with our program whatsoever. And maybe he's sending us emails, phone calls and wants to walk on. Uh, he does not have that. Uh, he, he would not have that uh, the availability to do that unless we said so. And so when those are extended, that means that as long as they can get into school, uh, we, we want them to be here and they can be here for the first day of training camp. That's the difference. All right, Mike Farrell, then Dan Riley, go ahead, Mike. 
Yeah, Jimmy, I mean, you mentioned Sam Hewitt, obviously, and I'm just wondering, you know, a guy with that pedigree and that name and that history and being from Seattle, just how important was it for this program to get a guy like that to, to commit and to sign here? Extremely important. And first I'll say this, you know, I, I know that that name and that pedigree and all that will be the headlines, but um, the reason Sam Hewitt was offered a scholarship by us and by a whole bunch of teams across the country and everybody wanted his services and that and that young man to be in their program because he's a phenomenal football player uh he's a phenomenal football player he's a phenomenal leader and um you know that that's first and foremost and i and i know the pressures and the headlines of his last name and uncle and dad and and all those things but uh what, we, what we, you guys should really focus on is, is what this young man was able to do for his high school and, um, and, and the talent uh, that he has on the football field, but also uh, the excellent student he is and also the excellent member of our community as well. And so we're, we're excited that he's, that he's a dog and um, we always want to add really, really special people and special football players to our program. And Sam is one of those. All right, we'll go to Dan Raley and then wrap it up with Chris Fetters. Go ahead, Dan. Jimmy, you, you mentioned attrition on your roster, and right as we got on this call, uh, the Times is reporting that Jacob Sermon's entering the transfer portal. Can you confirm that at all? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Jacob Sermon, he's uh, – I've, I've loved watching his uh, his growth, uh, especially uh, this year in 2020 um, as a person and as a football player. Um, so proud of him, of, of where he where he has come. And uh, you guys see the quarterback position uh, around college football. Uh, it's just like, uh, you know, where, where's the, where's the, where's that quarterback going to be the next year and then the year after that. And the, the portal is a big thing for that position. And we have a talented quarterback room and um, he decided to, 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 to try to go play and, and start for another football team. And uh, we wish him the best and he handled it the right way. And uh, we'll be rooting for, for Jacob Sermon. All right. Uh, last question from Chris Fetters. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Jimmy, you, you talked a little bit about Zakari. I was curious about the other two guys, especially I'm assuming you have had long-term relationships with both uh, Dyson McCutcheon and, um, and Vince Dunley. Can you talk a little bit about them and, and what you saw in them? Any, any comparisons to guys that you've brought uh, through the program so far? Yeah, Vince is, uh, you know, physical safety. He's got really good length. Uh, another guy that, as you guys know, that's what we, we were looking for, that tough physical guy. We think he's going to be able to come here. He's going to put some weight on naturally and, um, and have that length and also have those ball skills to be able to, to change the game. We love talking football with him. Um, he, he, you can tell he, he loves it and he breathes it, and you, you've got to be able to love it and breathe it uh, to come here to UW. And, um, and then Dyson, man, we're, we're excited about him. He comes from a football family. Uh, his dad, you know, played played in the NFL and uh, for years, and you could tell uh, he lives and breathes football as well. And so, hopefully, that's what you guys see. We're, we're we're looking for. There's a bunch of traits we're looking for. Obviously, measurables, all those things that maybe you see. But we're also looking for guys that just love football, that love to come up here, sit in our offices, watch hours of tape, um, that are always trying to grow, always trying to improve. We want guys that love football, that don't just get caught up in the recruiting and how many stars are on their names. We want guys that are grinders. Those are the guys that make it to the National Football League, and that's why we feel like we've selected the right guys over these years, guys like Dyson, guys like Vince, guys like Sam Heward, that we know are football savants, love football, can, can continue to grow, will end up helping us win championships and then achieve their dreams as National Football League football players. All right, we'll take one more, if that's okay, Coach, from Kim Grimm. Yeah. All good. Go ahead, Kim. Hey, just real quick with Jacob Sermon uh, being in the transfer portal, is he still part of the team or has he moved on? Well, if he's in the portal, that means you're in the portal. It's like uh, Star Trek, like you're in the middle, right? You're not, you're not part of a team, right? You're like in the, you're in limbo. You're in limbo. I don't know how, however you want to say that, Kim, he's in limbo right now, right? If you're in the portal, that means you're, you're halfway between where you were and where you're going. I don't, I don't know if that answers your question. All right, that'll wrap it up for us. 